Hello and welcome back to Guided Hacking. This is Fred K and today we're going to be taking a look at polyglot files. So before I tell you what polyglot files are, I think I'm just going to show you. You can see this tweet here with an image connected to it. If I right click on the image and then just save it, we can open up the file and we see it's just a normal image. But in the image, it says save this image and change the extension to dot zip. So what if we go ahead and we go and do that? Well, we could take the file and with the new extension, we can then go and unzip it. It does give a few errors, but it extracts a file folder with the name tweetable polyglot png main. And inside it, there's some Python source code and a few more files that look like they've come from a GitHub repository. What are polyglot files? So a polyglot file is a computer program or script written in a valid form of multiple programming languages or file formats. The name was coined by an analogy to multilingualism and a polyglot file is composed by combining two syntaxes from different formats. And then this can be compiled and can be shared around. In our example that I just showed off, we could see an example of a polyglot file of having both a zip and a PNG in one, where if the file format is a PNG, then it'll be opened and a correct image will be displayed. Or if I change it to a zip, it will act as a zip and I can extract it. But of course, this is cool and all, but we want to find out how this can be applied to malware. So let's look at some real world examples of how polyglot malware has been used in real world attacks. Before we look at some real world attacks though, I just wanted to go over this repository here called Polyglot's Database, which is an overview of some of the possible combinations of different file formats. Scrolling through it, we can see the X's for which file formats are compatible such as 7-zip and a jar file with the file extension of 7-zip or an AVI and a zip with file extension AVI. And scrolling down, we can see all kinds of things like zips, docx, and a few others, which would be incredibly useful for an attacker to use so that they can make use of this more undetected attack technique. Deep Instinct put out a coverage on some rat users who would make use of this polyglot method by combining both a MSI file and a jar file, meaning that you could both run an MSI or a jar on your system depending on whether you have Java installed or whether you just want to go with a normal Windows system and use MSI, making it much more easy for it to handle all kinds of different environments. Scrolling down, they also talk about using cab and jar files, which we've talked about in the past, but solely looking at cab, this example here isn't really commonly seen in the wild, but they go on to talk about how these files are packed with fake data and trash to, so that they can throw off detection. Also throwing in fake binary data and creating fake PE headers so that detections might fail on these. And they look at the results by uploading them to VirusTotal, and you can see that the results are quite good, with only 6 out of 59 antiviruses detecting the file. They go on to show off something that I find absolutely terrifying, an HTML with a jar file. And on their GitHub, they've given an example of this. So looking at this HTML file, it looks like a normal license file that you may see when you're downloading software. but Taking this file and going into CMD, you can type in Java and run the file and you can see that it runs as a normal Java file as well. So you can use this for some kind of social engineering, but also as a great attack ve vector to bypass antiviruses. Now, I want to actually do some analysis of a polyglot file ourselves so that we can go on to further understand how these work. We'll be covering some of the content that's explained with this, within this blog post about how a polyglot file is used to deliver iced ID, so a very significant piece of malware. Now, before I go through the blog contents, we'll do the analysis first so I don't spoil too much. Let's look at the files. So here we can see an overview of the attack chain. The victim will receive an email. 
they'll get a password protected zip attachment. Once they extract it, they get an ISO image. They have two malicious files, a compiled HTML help file to run the ISID installer and a hidden DLL to install ISID. Then they'll send out some HTTP traffic for a gzip binary and these will, binaries will be used for persistence and the ISID DLL will be created from the gzip binary. Then the HTTPS C2 traffic from ISID will begin and follow-up activity is usually cobalt strike. Well, thanks to Brad from Malware Traffic, we have the IOCs here and we're going to start off by looking at this Eros tracking file, which is the content of that email that the victim would receive with password of the following. Going into the folder, we can see that file, we can extract it and we are met with the ISO file. Now, simply clicking on an ISO file, we will be brought into what looks like somewhat of an archive, and we can see the DLL and the CHRM file here. If I look at the properties of this file, you can see that its attributes have been set as hidden. So if I didn't have my Windows environment set to show these hidden files, the victim wouldn't be able to see that file and they'd solely see the CHM file. So first of all, what is a CHM file? Well, a CHM file is a Microsoft help file. And what it fundamentally is, is a compressed HTML document with the HTML file format and can and includes the text, images, and hyperlinks within the file. So when you open it, it can be used to give a overview or some help with software or other things within Windows. And if a user double clicks on this, then it will automatically execute this app.dll. But because it's compressed, I can just use 7-zip and I can extract it to get the contents. And within the contents, we see a few things. We see some strings here, and that doesn't contain too much. Looking through, we also have the HTML file itself. So this is what would pop up if you were to execute it. And it's just a Microsoft customer service and support. This is probably copied from some default pop-up that's used within Windows, but it also has a few parameters here of an item which will call CMD and it will start by calling MSHTA on that CHM. This command here will rerun the execution of the same Microsoft help file, but by calling Microsoft HTML application, it will execute some other code that's buried deep within this file. If we actually look at the file itself, we should be able to find it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the file within a hex editor, and we can look for some of the strings that are common to this top form of attack. By looking for HTML, right at the end of the file, we will find what we're looking for. So we can copy this and I'm going to copy this into a hex editor and we can see that it's an HTA application and that the window state is set to minimize. Everything is disabled so that it doesn't show and has a script language of JavaScript. It will set the window size size to zero zero so it's invisible and call a new ActiveX object to run WScript shell. This will call a CMD process to then call run dll on that app.dll which is the hidden file we looked at before and this is the stager that will then execute iced id i hope that this was a good introduction to how polyglot files can be used to abuse victims and to evade antiviruses until the next one goodbye if you enjoyed this video a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads if you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalogue of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.